Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege to have high tech at a beach. I just pray it would all work together for your glory this morning and that our time in your word would really be enriching for our spirits today. You would just let us all grow closer to you, to the understandings that we need that would make us more like your son. In these days that we live, Lord, we want to reflect his light and his love, his grace and mercy to, the, to those, those around us, Lord. Let us be like bright lanterns in, the, in this community for you. And I pray you'd equip us for that shining this morning some more as we continue to study your word. In Jesus' name, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We pray in Christ's name. And everyone that agreed with me said, Amen. 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 Would you look in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, 2 Corinthians 1, we're going to continue studying what we study. Now, last week was a hard study for me to share just because it dredged up uh, some painful memories of hard times that I've gone through. But Paul said that he went through a lot of hard times when he was ministering the gospel. And he said because of that, he, those hard times, he got to taste of the comfort that God gives when we're in those hard times. And uh, anyone can give an amen that God is the God that does give us comfort when there's nothing else that, I mean, when we don't have comfort from this world, Paul says that, that these hardships, these hard trials, he said he was so hard pressed in, in, the, in Asia that he, he said he was beyond his strength, burdened beyond his strength, so excessively that he said he even despaired. Not, not, not just him, I want you to look at verse 8 that even he says we, meaning Timothy who was with him writing this letter, you can find that in verse 1 of this chapter, he says we despaired even of life. Now if you've ever had such a bad week that, anyone here ever f felt this way like you just wish it was over? You, you had such a bad week, you're like I just would like to check out, go home with the Lord, let's get out, let's be done. You know, no, no one, J just just me and, uh, no, ju just me and Connie. The only honest one, oh, and, okay, a couple over here. Yeah, a few of those. You know, every once in a while, you know. You know, but I don't know about you, but I take great comfort, it says right here in the Scripture, that even Paul and Timothy had that, where they, where they were burdened beyond, he said, even, even beyond their strength, and they despaired even of their lives. They were just, they were like, man, it, this is too hard. But Paul... We ended with this last week. He said that indeed, verse 9, would you pick up with me where we left off last week? Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves so that we would not trust in what? In ourselves. He says, but God, rather we would trust in God who raises the dead. It really comes down to what, what do you trust in? Do you trust in yourself, in your own strengths, in your own abilities? Or do you trust in the Lord? And Paul says that when you go through burdens that are, I mean, excessive, so hard that it, it, it drives you to that place where you're beyond your own strength, it's to teach you to trust not in yourself. It's to teach you to trust in God. Because if we don't put our trust in the right place, guys, we're, we're, we're really behind the eight ball on this, trying to trying to walk through this life, if we're just trusting in our own strengths, in our own flesh, there's going to come a few problems from that. And Paul knows it. So Paul says that, that these things forced him to trust in God. In verse 10, he said, who delivered us also from this great peril of death. And he says, and will deliver us. He has delivered us. And this is what Paul has come to learn. God's deliverance he did it then, and Paul saying, and now I know he will do it what? In the future. The, the beauty of experiencing things of the Lord, the things of the Lord are, are everlasting. You know, like when God shows you he's got enough strength to get you through the times when you have, don't have strength. Remember, Paul's the one who wrote, when I am weak, then I am what? Strong. What a crazy statement. 
I mean, if you think of it without the spirit included, right? I mean, because if you're thinking, when I'm weak, then I'm strong, you're, you're like, are you cuckoo? No, no, he was saying, he's saying, when I was, when I'm weak, he said, then I'm strong because I know my strength isn't in myself. My strength comes from the Lord. When I'm weak, and, and you know, I hate this because I remember when Wally Dolan was here, he used to, I'd, ha I'd have some, you know, pastors, we don't always get good sleep on Saturday nights. It's kind of a, in fact, if you if you want to sign up for ministry, I just want to give you a heads up. Don't ever plan on sleeping for, for mo most of your life. Just give it up for a, a perpetual Lent or whatever. It's just part of, part of the deal that the enemy figures I'll attack, and one of the ways he attacks is he attacks your sleep. Because if he messes up your sleep, it messes up all your rhythm, messes up all that stuff. And I mean, it, coming from a military upbringing, military family, you know, one of the tactics of war is just keep your enemies from being able to get a good night's sleep. Bomb them through the night, right? What, what happens? They, they keep getting shell-shocked and they can't sleep and then they can't function. You can get someone so sleep-deprived that I don't care if they're the best. They can be a super sniper, but the guy hasn't slept in, in, in five or six days and guess what? He can't hold his rifle correct. And he starts nodding. And, and it's just something the enemy... The, guys, we think we're really smart at war. Where do, you think we got the, where do you think we got the insights? If you read the Bible, you'll find out that the enemy's been using that tactic for a long time. The enemy of our souls has been attacking. And if you want to go in ministry, just a heads up, you get attacked a lot. Usually, you know, depending on how much you're going to be used on that, say, that next day, you'll get a lot of attacks the night before. If you're going to be super used, you'll get attacked two or three nights in a row. You'll be thinking, why is all these attacks coming? And I remember Wally Dahl and I'd get here, I'd just exhausted, just be like, I, I'm, I'm undone. And Wally'd go, it's going to be a great message. I was like, shut up, Wally. He says, yeah, because every time you're weak, that's when the Lord is strong. That's when, you, that's when he comes through. And, you know, and I'm sitting here going, I feel like jello, you know, like just undone. And Lord, you better just make my mouth put the words in I'm supposed to say because... I, I don't have it. I don't have it left. And, and I, have, I, I can relate to what Paul is saying. When you go through these things that burden you beyond your strength, that's when you're forced to find out what are you really going to trust in. Is your trust really in the Lord? Or, or is it in, well, I'll just take a nice power nap and I'll renew my strength and then I'll get back at it. If that's the case, you're just trusting in yourself, not in the Lord. But Paul says he saw that God delivered him from the peril of death. He, not just him, him and Timothy. He said he delivered us on whom we have set our hope. And yet we know he will deliver us. The beauty of seeing God's hand of delivering you in a situation and learning to trust him for today is it helps you trust him for tomorrow. Because you go, well, he got me through that. And if he got me through that, do you think he can handle tomorrow? This is the beauty of serving the Lord. The longer you do it, the more you really don't worry about tomorrow. Because you're like, hey, the Lord got me through that yesterday and the day before, and I've been through a lot of trials. He's got me through all that stuff. Now, he might put something bigger in front of you, but just to, just to let you know, in God's mathematical scheme, whatever you're facing in the future... You might say, but it's a bigger trial than what I went through. I've never gone through one quite as big as that. I'm going to tell you, in God's mathematics, you need to learn what's called summing up. In other words, add the trial when you were trusting him for your rent, and add the trial the day before when you're trusting him for your relationship, and the trial from a couple weeks before that for, for your car payment or your electric bill, and sum up all of those things, that, that, that little trust you needed here, and that trust, that, and that trust, and add them up and say, is it enough to be greater than what I'm facing right now? And it will be. God just has a way of always making where what, we've, what he's brought us through. You know how I know this? I learned it from the Old Testament in the life of a man named David. David had to face Goliath. Remember that? But David, the king wanted to put David in all of the king's armor. You know, here, wear my shield, wear my sword, wear my helmet, all this stuff. And they, they actually took this little kid, David, and they suited him up with the king's armor. What did David say? No armor. He says, I, I don't know this stuff. 
I, this isn't, you know, this isn't proven to me. I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't fight with this. He says, but, but what I do know is that God, who delivered into my hand this lion that attacked, the, remember what was, what was David's occupation when, before he came from Jesse's, his dad? He, he, was, a, he was a shepherd boy. And he says, God delivered the lion that attacked the sheep into my hand. He delivered the bear into my hand. So he had two experiences, a lion and a bear that attacked, and God let him beat both of those. And David said, this, this Goliath, this giant, will be just like that lion and the bear. He, he, in his mind, he just summed up. Look, if I can take out a lion and a bear by the strength of the Lord, by God's trusting in God, then I can take out this guy. So he took off all the king's armor, gets his sling, right? Some stones, five stones he takes, puts in his pouch. How many did he use? One. Why the other four? Because Goliath had four other brothers. No, Goliath had four other brothers. So he, he, he was, in Chronicles, that's right, he was going to be symbolically the guy that will take out the other four heads of the Philistines. There was five kings of the Philistines. They were all, all of them. He says, and David just took, it only took one stone. I go with what I know. I'll trust the Lord. And he said to, he said to him, you, you come with all of your stuff. I come with the Lord. In the name of the Lord, this day you're going to die. To Goliath, he tells him. And he throws that stone and it goes right into his forehead and he dies. It's because he trusted God. What do we trust in? When we face giants in, in this life, there, there are going to be things you're going to face that will be just like giants. Now remember, everything happened in the Old Testament says happened for our example. It happened so that we could, we could learn the lesson from what they went through and we could say, hey, how could I use that for me? Let's go on and see. Paul is now going to say, these guys in, in the Corinthian church, who he, he had planted this church, he says, I know God will yet deliver us and you. Now, what's their part in this deliverance? He tells us in verse 10. He says, and you also, by joining in helping us, how? Through what? One thing he says, prayer. You joining in helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by many persons on behalf of, of the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of of many. Is there any power in prayer? Does prayers actually do anything? It's not just talking to the air. We're talking to the living God, God Almighty. And when you talk to Him, Paul says, you guys are helping us by joining in in prayer. Now sometimes you think, you see somebody who's despairing. I mean, they're at the end of their strength. They're burdened excessively. They're going through cancer treatments or they're going through a divorce. They're, they're you know, their life is just unraveling before them. And you think, what can I do? What's the answer? You can pray for them. And one of the, one of the greatest comforts, whether you realize it or not, sometimes some of your friends are going to be going through some really hard things. And you're thinking, what can I say to them? How can I help them? It's easy. You know how you help them? You say, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. I'll be praying for you. And I'll, I'll join you through this, what you're going through, by I'll keep praying to the Lord to g help get you through this. That comforts them, doesn't it? Now they can say, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God. I don't know. You know, and it's funny, the atheists, when they, when they hit a really rough patch, and I tell, I tell them, I'm praying for you. They don't go, oh, don't do that. It's so funny. They're like, all of a sudden they sound like a believer. Oh, thank you, I really need that. That's right. No atheist in a foxhole. As soon as it gets bad, prayers are welcome. But Paul understood this. He said, the way that you can really help someone in, in that place when they're just burdened beyond their, their strength, they are, they are pressed down so bad, you can help them by just saying, I'm praying for you. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.